Okay, so we're going to start up with um, exercise 222. But before I do that, um, I also gave you the handout for assignment 204, which will be two light fixtures. It's due the 23rd of um, November, which is the Thursday or the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay, so my goal there was that you didn't have to worry about it over Thanksgiving break and you could have a good Thanksgiving break. So uh, that's why it's due before that, but you have plenty of time. Obviously, it's not even November yet, so you have time. Today, we're going to start with creating lights in Rhino and V-Ray, which I think you will agree with me ultimately that this is probably the more exciting thing uh, that you can really learn to do in Rhino and V-Ray. Uh, you look at the, the work that the 220 class did, uh, if you saw that for their, their last review, a lot of buildings had lights in them. They've been pushing what lights can do. The sexiest, best renders are always that twilight nighttime render with the glow and all that stuff. So everybody always wants to know how to do that. Everybody wants to do the night render. They're hard to do, but we're going to start now working through kind of the, the fundamentals of how you do it. But in order to start doing that, we have to talk about both the geometry of a light fixture and the actual V-Ray light settings that work. It gets complicated, it gets weird. There are things that happen like you get bad light bulbs in V-Ray that are just bad and they don't work and then you have to make new ones. So there are things that happen that are weird. We'll go through what all those weird things are uh, as we go forward. There's also a lot of intricate settings that have to be done for it to work correctly. And I try my best to identify this is the various settings that you need and therefore it's not as hard as it would be if you were starting from scratch, but at the same time, it's kind of tricky, and that's why a night rendering is so valuable. It takes a lot to, to get a good quality night rendering. So I've gone ahead and I pulled up your exercise 22, 222, which is the introduction to lighting. At the bottom of this page is a file that you're going to need to download. It's called the basic night scene, um, which is right here. If you click on it, it will give you this weird uh, basically code. We're going to go ahead and right click on it and save the link as and then save it to your flash drive. Oops. So let me go ahead and drop it into today. And I'll go ahead and save that. It's a .vizopt file. It will help you load stuff. Okay. Uh, I also have you have a sample night environment for you, which is about halfway down in building uh, part two. That sample night scene.3dm um, is also something that we're going to need for today as well. So I'll go ahead and copy that and put it on my flash drive into my folder. And actually, you know what? Let me create a new folder for today. This is fall 2016. And let's go ahead and paste that in there as well. Okay, I'm going to use this basic night scene uh, pretty soon, but not quite yet. Okay, so the first thing that you have to understand about uh, lighting in V-Ray and whatever is that you have to actually make the light fixture itself. So the physical geometry that holds the light bulb, you have to create. And so if we were looking at this room, at the artificial light that's in this room, in the back we have uh, you know, some really ugly fluorescent recessed lights that are there. If we were to try to model those in Rhino and or V-Way, we would have to create the geom geometry that would actually hold the light first. Okay. That's separate and apart from the actual light in V-Ray that casts the light and the shadows. So they're two different things. So we're going to start first with the geometry. And I'm going to start in the most simple uh, kind of exercise. And that is to do a, a light fixture on the ceiling that's a can light. So the bulk of the geometry is hidden in the ceiling. And I'm not even going to do the, that part of the geometry. It doesn't matter. All I'm going to work on is the part that we would see from uh, underneath. So if I work in the perspective view here, and I start by creating a, a circle curve, and I'll start at point zero, 00 for the center of this. Let's say the diameter, um, I don't know, do we want it to be, let's do a four inch can light. So the diameter is, we'll say four inches. And 
There it is. Let's say that we need a little bit of trim to this. So let's offset uh, and give ourselves maybe, I don't know, uh, 3 quarters of an inch of trim, like that. And so obviously this is small. I need to actually build the geometry here. So let's do a profile for the trim, and let's have it look reasonably exciting. Let's say, um, go over an eighth. Let's go over point. And let's go. I'm just making this up as I go along. Oops, that was not right. There we go. We'll go over by. And then let me do going up from here. And let me chamfer it with, uh, I don't know, a distance of let's say first curve, second curve. Okay, something like that. Let me take all of these and I'm gonna join them. Rotate 3D. And we'll fold that up into a, a profile okay, of my little trim. So then I'll sweep this. So let's do a sweep. One. Select the rail there. Select the, the profile. There it is. And we'll say OK. If I were to look at this in the shaded view, we could see I've just made the, the little trim that goes around it. Okay. Now that I have that, I need the light bulb itself. So let's do, under the primitives, I'm going to use one of these, uh, not the sphere, this ellipsoid. Okay, and we'll do ellipsoid by diameter. Uh, let me turn on quadrant snap so I can do the di diameter here. That would be there and there. That would be there. And then my overall thickness here, I don't know, let's go 0.25 inches, something like that. Okay, so it builds that little piece for me. Okay. This happens to be the wrong direction. I need it to be upside down because it's going to go on the ceiling. So let me do a quick rotate 3D on this whole thing. We'll start at 0, 0, and we'll flip this whole thing over so that we're looking at the underside of it. I also don't need this part of it because it's hidden in the ceiling. It doesn't make sense to cast light into the ceiling. So we'll go ahead and do a trim using this. And we'll get rid of this. Oh, come on. Intersect. There we go. There's my curve. Well, I did a terrible job of doing that. Let me do a quick uh, surface here. And we use this to trim off that half of the bulb. There we go. OK, so I end up, all I am concerned about is the bottom half, something like that. OK, so this is then the geometry that's going to uh, act as my light fixture and make it realistic that the, the light would be cast in V-Ray. OK, so we need a few things. Let's organize my layers a bit. Let's call this 4-inch can light. I'll just do 4-can light. And then let's create a sublayer for trim. For CL trim. I cannot type today. Sorry. And let's do a sub for 4 CL. And I'm going to call this bulb. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this piece here would be the bulb. This piece here would be the trim. The rest of these layers can go away. And let's go ahead and start with the trim, right? I need to assign a material for the trim. So let's go to the, my materials. And let's load up something for trim. And uh, maybe I'll do, uh, I don't know, some just some shiny white trim. Let's go and do like a white porcelain.
assign material to layer, put it on the trim layer, there we go. So I have this with a material on it, and if I were looking at it in rendered mode, we'd see that, okay, I have a material on it, very basic material. But this light bulb itself needs to have a glow to it. If we were to look at the light fixtures in this room and we saw the bulbs, I know they have a little uh, diffuser over them, but if we were to see the actual bulbs, we'd see the bulb and it would be glowing, correct? Okay. So we can do the same thing in V-Ray with a material. We can make a glowing material. And it's called an emissive material. So I'm going to go ahead and create this emissive material. And I'll call it, let's go to see materials, create material. Thus far, we've always done standard. Okay. We're going to do that again, standard. But I'll call this, let's call it light bulb. If I can type. Hold on. And I'll say OK. And now we have to do some very specialized settings for this particular material. If we were looking at it right now, it just looks like default gray material. Okay. So I have these written out so that you guys can follow along. It is under, let me just see, uh, V-Ray 8.15. So if I go to my tutorials and I go to V-Ray and we go down to 8.15, there it is, emissive material. And I'm actually pulling this up because as many times as I've done this, I can't remember these settings. Okay, I have to look them up. So we're going to start by creating an emissive layer. So let me go back to Rhino. And on this, if we right click, remember when we did create layers and we did like reflection layers and reflection, refraction layers to represent glass and reflections and all that sort of thing? One of the things that we can create is something called emissive. And that means that it's letting light out. So it shows up just as our typical drawer, right? Above diffuse, there's emissive. And we need to adjust some settings. So emissive color is going to be 200, 161, and 82. So we'll go back to here. There's my emissive color. And we're going to type in an R value of 200 a G value of 161, and a blue value of 82. Okay? Turns out to be a really ugly yellow. Okay? And we'll go ahead and say, OK, that's OK. okay? Then we'll go to our next setting. The emissive transparency, we want to be 100, 100, 100. So we'll go right here to transparency. We'll set this to 100, 100, and 100. And we'll go ahead and say, OK. okay? So we have this as our color this as our transparency. We'll move back. We're going to change our diffuse color to 155. There's our diffuse color. 155, 155, 155. And we'll say OK. And then we'll do our last one, which is our diffuse transparency to be 000. I believe it's already set at 000, but we're going to confirm that it is. There it is, 000. So if we were to go to the preview button now, it looks pretty bad. Okay? But if you look carefully, and you probably can't see this on the screen, there's a little bit of orangey light that's being cast kind of down onto the squares at the bottom. Okay? There is one last value under emissive, and that is the intensity value. We're going to take this from an intensity value of 1. We'll go up to 100. And when we preview it, it's going to be as if we turn the light bulb on. And if you watch it on your screen when you do it, you can see that it lights up the, uh, the surrounding uh, checkerboard pattern. Okay? Now that this is set up as light bulb, we're going to go ahead and change this to the light bulb layer. And we'll say OK. okay? So if we were to preview this in the rendered mode, which it is in right now, we'd still see nothing. Okay? However, if we actually rendered it, we should get a result as if the bulb is turned on. Okay? You guys can't see it. I can see it. Okay? This isn't enough just yet, but we're going to go ahead and save this as our basic geometry. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and I'm going to save it into today's exercise. So this is 222, and we're going to call this my 4 can light, and I'll go ahead and click Save. So remember I told you 
that we needed that night scene that was already ready for us. We need that to be able to drop our block into the scene. So again, we've organized our file, the layers are set up correctly, and we need to then drop this light fixture into a night scene of some kind. Come on, Rhino. So let me go to File, and then Open. And I'm going to open the sample night scene. Maybe. There we go. And so there's not a whole lot to this sample night scene. It has a, a roof and a wall and a black background. So if I were to do a basic rendering of it right now, you guys don't see much. You can see a little bit of it. There's a little bit of a shadow being cast by the moon um, or mimicked by moon shadow. Uh, the background is just kind of a black modeled background. Okay, Not much to it, which is fine. However, what we're going to do is we're going to drop our light fixture into this scene. So let me give myself a little bit of help. I'm going to draw a line that goes across this diagonally. And then I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to go find that can line. And so that was under today. Oops. Live demonstrations, 222. And there's my 4-inch can light. I'll go ahead and say open. I'll say OK. Remember, I want to link my file as a reference. I'll say OK. If it asks me to replace materials, I want to replace and apply to all. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this right to the center, I hope, of that little line. Oh, come on. Up. Thank you. At least somebody's paying attention, right? This has been how my day is going. I warned my first class not to ask me any questions because it would break. Uh, OK, so now I have this in my little scene here. And if we were looking at this and I went to render, it would conveniently show me just a tiny little bit of glow. Okay, which is good. But this light isn't enough to actually light the scene. It mimics what the light ball looks like, but it doesn't show me what the light looks like. Okay, and that's one of these weird things. So we've done the material, we've made it look like a light bulb, but we haven't actually put the, the light in. Okay? So the light itself has to be in the final scene in which you're going to do the rendering. So lights do not come through as a block. So a V-ray light, if you put a spotlight in, isn't going to come through as a block, okay? which is the weird part of this. So the light has to go in the final scene. So now I'm going to go ahead and create the light bulb. Okay? And I'm going to do that using the V-Ray toolbar here. There is something called a spotlight. And I'll go ahead and click on the spotlight. And it's going to ask me for the base of the cone. So I'll start with the base of the cone. And we'll go ahead and snap to the same midpoint. Okay? I'm going to type D for diameter. And I'm going to do a diameter of two feet. Okay? And then I want to set my height at one foot. And it's easier to do that in one of the side views. And I'll type one foot in the side view, and I'll make that little cone. Okay? That cone then represents the light. But one of the tricks relating to a cone, or a spotlight in this case, is that it has to not be contained within any other geometry. It has to float by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and move this. So that instead of being in the wall, it's just below the light itself. Okay, This is close enough. Obviously, I could move it a little bit closer. But this point right here, the origin of the light, can't be within any other object. So it has to be floating by itself. Okay, So I have that there. This proportion of 2 to 1 is a pretty good proportion for what I'm, I'm going to be doing. Okay, And I'll show you the end results in just a second. So let me go ahead and select this light. And now we're going to get to the light properties. So just like before, over here, we have the light selected. Instead of, like, say, the texture mapping button, right? now we have light properties itself. So as we go through this, yes, it is enabled. Okay, then we get to intensity. First thing I want to do is adjust my color. So I'll click on this. And my color should be 255, 214, and 170. 
and that mimics a reasonable incandescent light, so a halogen sort of light. Okay? So I'll go ahead and say OK, and that color is set. Then I come down to my units. I'm skipping intensity for just a second, and the default units are scalar, which means absolutely nothing to me. Okay? To me, it's a whole lot easier to switch to radiant power, or the capital W, which is in watts. Most of us are used to picking a light bulb by watts. You know, oh, I want a 60 watt light bulb. I want a 100 watt light bulb. Okay? If we switch to radiant power, we can do the same thing. So let's say that I want, uh, we'll do a 60 watt. Okay, so now I adjust the intensity to be 60. The radiant power is my units. Then we come down here under options. My decay should be inverse square. Right? This, by the way, is all written out on your little handout. And actually, I just noticed under intensity, I had it set for 40. So I'll switch it to 40 to match what you guys are seeing on the screen. OK, so my decay is inverse square. My fall off is linear. That's fine. The rest of the settings here are all fine. If, however, you end up starting to establish this and you see that sampling is at 0, 0, 0, or something like that, you have a bad light bulb. OK, and it sounds really stupid. But V-Ray, every once in a while, will throw you a bad bulb. And it's kind of like when you go to the store and you buy a light bulb and you get home and you go to screw it in and it doesn't work because you had a bad one. right? V-Ray does the same thing. I don't know. Maybe it's a joke. But they do. And you will run into this at least once during the rest of this class where you just have a bad one. If that's the case, delete it. Start with a new one. Okay? You can't recover it. You can't put in the values. It's just burn out. Go figure. Okay? It will probably happen to me at some point while I'm doing these. So I now have the settings set up correctly. Let's look at my render one here. And I'll zoom in. And then let's go ahead and render it. The, the renderings on this are relatively small, so they go pretty fast. There's no reason for you to have to do uh, distributed rendering on this. So now I have my light bulb showing, as it did before. But see how I have this nice arc on the wall, right? And a little bit of an arc on the ground. Okay, That's representing the light that's being cast. If I change the geometry or I change the intensity, I'm going to have a different end result. So let's take this and let me change the intensity maybe to 100. And then let me render it. OK, you can already tell it's much brighter, right? as if I switched out my bulb from a 40 watt bulb to a 100 watt bulb. It's much brighter. I get more reflection back up on the ceiling. Okay. I can also instead change how this light works. And let me do these on a couple layers here for a second. And why I have so many of these layers is probably because I, this is old. Let's get rid of these two. Oh, it has blocks on it. Okay, let me just create a new layer for lights and then create a new sub layer. I'm doing this just so that you can see the difference. So let me change objects to that layer. Create a new sub layer here. Let's turn this one off. And I'm going to create a brand new spotlight. Same place. Okay, but this time under diameter, I'll do a diameter of one foot and a height of one foot. So I kept the height the same, but I made the diameter smaller. Okay, and once again, I'll move this down so it's below my light fixture. Okay, so the previous one you can see is much wider. This one is going to be a little bit narrower. So it's going to change what the light looks like. So once again, I have to go back to my settings. We'll change our color, 255, 214, 170. Oops, 70. My units will be in watts. My intensity, I'll do it at 100 again so that you guys can see it. My decay is inverse square. The rest of the settings are all fine. Now we'll go ahead and do this rendering again. So the intensity is up a little bit, but see how by narrowing the focus, it's more of a spotlight on the ground. Okay? I'm not getting any of the arc on the wall that I was getting with the last one. The opposite is true if I make the light wider. So let me go ahead and create a new light. And let's make this active. Let's take this and make sure it's on this layer. Turn it off. Let me create a new spotlight. Oops. 
So we'll start at the same place. This time my diameter will do four feet. And we'll again only do a height of one foot. Move it down like that. And then I once again have to go through the properties. Oops. Ah, I can't type today. 170. There we go. Default units are in watts. And here we go under intensity. We'll do it at 100 again. And we need an inverse square. And we'll jump back and render this again. So see how, because it's wider, the arc on the wall gets much taller and much broader. Okay, so depending on what your light looks like, you can really vary what the light looks like in your final scene. Okay, so I've done, a, the spotlight is probably the, the easiest, most basic geometry to work through. Okay, the next type of light is going to be a, a light that has a point source. So instead of coming from one direction and going just down, it's going to go in all directions. So once again, I have to go back to my uh, separate file, and we'll create a brand new one. And we need to, to actually create the geometry to hold the light. So in this case, maybe we'll do, uh, let's, let's do a floor lamp. OK? So I need to create the base for the floor lamp. Uh, we'll do a cylinder here. Let me start at 0, comma 0. Uh, I don't know, a diameter of 1 foot, a height of 1 inch. OK, there we go for my little cylinder. I should be able to show it as shaded. There it is. Let's go ahead and create a little, um, I'll use a cylinder again here. Let me turn on center. There we go. Uh, diameter here of the pole, maybe 1 inch. And we'll go up, I don't know, four feet. OK, and so basically you get the idea. I'm creating something rather simple. OK, this shape will be the base. So let me call this, let's call this a floor lamp. And let me create a new sub layer and we'll call this FL base. Change the object layer. Right now I have probably as part of this maybe a shade a little lampshade or something. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll start with a circle there. Uh, diameter, let's do one foot. Let's extrude curve. OK, I don't want it to be solid. So solid, no, that's good. And let's make this, I don't know, um, 16 inches tall. Okay. Now, this ends at the exact same point as the light. Let's move this light down a little bit. Let's move vertical maybe by two inches. Oops, how about negative two? Move vertical, negative two inches. One more time. No. Vertical, negative four inches. There we go. All right, so just so that they overlap slightly. Okay, so this then would be the shade. So let me go ahead and create a new layer, and we'll call this uh, FL shade. And now let's go ahead and get rid of these extra layers. Again, or layer organization is important. Okay, these are on the base layer. This is on the shade layer. We can confirm that. I didn't put it on yet. Change object layer. There we go. So we can confirm. Yep, that's the shade. That's the base. Now we need materials. So once again, I'll go to materials. Let's go ahead and load a material for my base. I don't know. Let's do some kind of a brushed metal. Brush metal. And let's apply this to my base layer. Let's take my shade and let's load a material. Actually, I'm going to create a new material create a new standard material. I'm going to call this lampshade. And I'll say OK. Now, I'm, I'm just going to do a few adjustments to this. This is probably the simplest way of creating a lampshade. I'm going to pick a color. And so we'll say, you know, my color is somewhere kind of a tannish color, maybe about like that. OK. And then my transparency will set a little bit of transparency, maybe a dark gray transparency. 
not much to it. If we preview it, it looks kind of like a lampshade. Okay, that's good enough for right now. Let me go ahead and apply this to the lampshade layer. So there it is set up. If I were to look at this in rendered view, right, we could see that I have a brushed base and I have the, the little lampshade that's there. So the geometry of this is now done. So I'll go ahead and go to File, Save, and I'm going to save this into today's folder and I'll call this a floor lamp. Now, notice I didn't create the bulb itself. Right, I didn't create the light bulb because it's covered up by the shade. And because I'm not seeing it, I'm not going to worry that it's, it's there. Okay, it saves me rendering power not to have that. So I've eliminated that. I just have a basic hole where the light's going to ultimately go. So let's move back over to the night scene here. And let's go ahead and drop this into place. So I'm going to go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to look for my floor lamp. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Again, I'm going to link it as a reference. And I'll go ahead and drop it in there against the wall. OK? So now that's in place. So when I started to do this, right, I could do a spotlight that points up and a spotlight that points down, but I'm not going to get enough light out of the lampshade itself. So instead of using a spotlight, I'm going to use something different, and that is called a point light. So this point light exists as a tiny little speck. You can't see it, but it casts light in all directions. So I'll go ahead and pick point light. And I need something to snap it to. So let's start with, oh, come on. All right, let me use my center snap snap it to the center there. But I want it to go down. So this was the 16 inch shade. So let's go ahead and select the light. Let's move it vertically. Negative 8 inches. There we go. So now it's in the center. Now, part of the reason that I encourage you to use spotlights and point lights as your two primary lights is the settings are the same for both of them. So I'll go into my light settings. And once again, I'll set my color, 255, 214 and 170, and I'll say OK. And my intensity needs to be in watts, and we'll do it as a 40 watt right now. And my decay is already set to inverse square. So all of that looks good. And let me go ahead and turn off, oh, it looks like my point light was on this layer. Let me create another layer. layer, just so that I can turn that off. Okay, So now I'm back. I have my point light installed. You go to set view render one. There we go. And now I'll go ahead and render it. So. I'm getting the glow coming out of my shade, right? But I'm also getting a nice arc on the ceiling and a nice arc down here on the floor that is clear where it's not being cast through. Okay? If I were to change, and remember this works nicely by using this as a block, if I went to my materials and I went to my lampshade material and I changed the color of my lampshade to be, oh, I don't know, let's do it for my daughter, let's make it pink because everything has to be pink. And then I were to save it, we could go to my view here, close it, and I can go back to my edit blocks, block manager. There it is. My floor lamp link file is newer. Let's go ahead and update it. Yes. That's going to now be pink. If we looked at it in rendered mode, well, it's not going to show us it should be pink. Let me go ahead and go back to my shaded mode here, and let's go ahead and render it. So the lampshade's now pink, and the, the, the light that's being cast on the wall when it goes through the lampshade is pink. 
the light being cast on the ceiling, it's hard for you guys to see because it's not that intense, the light being cast on the ceiling is still white because it's clear or you know a very light shade of yellow. Let me turn up the intensity of that light so that maybe you guys can see it a little bit better here. Yeah, there, you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, so in this case, the light at the top and the bottom, the arcs here, don't have the pink tinge to them other than the reflected pink tinge off the wall and everything against the wall is more of that pink color. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so that would be how you go about doing something with a shade and a point light that goes in all directions. Okay, you guys are gonna create more complicated geometry than the stuff I'm doing, but I don't want you to sit here and watch me do fancy modeling. Okay, I do however want to show you one other thing uh, because it's fun and that is I'm gonna create a little neon sign. Okay, which is doing something even a slightly different strategy when it comes to this layer. So let me come back to my lamp and I'm gonna do a, a new uh, object, feet and inches. All right, and I have to create the, the neon. So let me use, uh, I'm gonna type uh, text, is it text? Start point, there we go. Okay, so let me go ahead and type in something um, it's Halloween, right? Boo. Okay, I can use whatever font that I want here. We'll just use Arial. I'll go ahead and say okay. It then creates this as a little object. Okay, let me go ahead and explode this, which gives me individual little lines. And then let me scale this. We'll say from there to there, we want it to be, I don't know, three feet. Okay, so I now have this as a shape. Let me go ahead and, uh, let's see, let me fill it with a radius of one inch because neon has to be a little bit smooth. Let's go around and just round off some of these corners a little bit. Nah, my radius is too big for those. Anyway, it'll work, it doesn't matter. Okay, so then let me go ahead and create a cross-section curve. So we'll do a little circle, and we'll say that the diameter is maybe a half inch. There it is. And let me rotate 3D. This should look familiar way back in the day. Remember we did this with the sweeps? All right, and let's do, let's copy this to a few places here. Let's do one. Oh, come on. Do one there, one there, 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 and there. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a sweep. One of this with that is my cross section curve, and it'll then build that. We'll sweep this with this. There. We'll sweep this with this. And again, I should have made those corners a little bit smoother, but you get the idea. And we'll do this with this. And we'll do this with this. So that one obviously didn't turn out as well, but whatever. Okay, so now let's take this and let's rotate 3D. And we'll start at 0, 0. And we will fold this up so that it's, it's in the vertical direction. And then we need to create our material. So in this case, we're seeing the light bulb itself, right? So we need to create that emissive material. So let me go ahead and create material standard. 
and let's call this orange neon. Say OK. I'm going to right click and say create layer. It's going to be emissive. And so we're going to do all the same settings except for the color. So let's start with the transparency here. And I have to go back. These ones I don't remember. 100. So our transparency is going to be at 100, 100, 100. Our color here is 155, 155, and that's 0, 0. So then we come to the color. And if we were looking at it, it still looks kind of gray. Let's change our color to be orange. Okay, Doesn't look like much. And then let's up our intensity. I don't know how high I need to make this intensity just yet. We'll see uh, what the right value is. Okay, so let's do maybe five. Okay, not sure. I might have to come back and, and make some adjustments on it. Okay, so let's apply this layer to the default layer here. I'll close this. Let me call this neon. And I'll get rid of these. There. All right. And now we can do a quick render here and say, OK, that's good. It's showing up. OK? Well, some of them are. And so let's then bring this into our, our scene. So let me go to File, Save. And we'll call this Neon. Click Save. And then we'll drop it in to the scene. So I'll go to Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to load up the neon. I'll say OK. Say OK. And we'll drop it right there. I need to make some adjustments to it. So let's go ahead and move it. that. I probably should hide this object and hide my light because it's just going to get in the way for right now. OK, so there it is. Let's make sure that it's not inside the wall itself. Let's move it out just a little bit from the wall. There we go. And we'll look at the rendered form. And we'll go ahead and do a test render and see. All right. Looks like a few of my lines didn't really quite show up. Uh, looks like the intensity needs to go up a little bit more. So I'd go back to my original here. Let's make sure all of these got the material. Apply material to selection. Let's bump this up to maybe 20. Let's save it. And let's go to this version, Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. There we go. My linked file is newer. Let's update it. Close. And we'll try that render again. Still having trouble with a few of the lines. But there you go. There's your, there's your quick and dirty neon sign. Okay? So the point is, in this context, right, when you're doing something like neon, it's not about casting large amounts of light into your space. Right? It's about a glow of a certain you know, material and the fact that the tubes themselves light up. So I'm not doing any fancy lighting to the scene. I'm just doing the words themselves. If I were doing the, the, the light on the ceiling, right, that's where a spotlight comes into play. If I'm doing a floor lamp that's going all around, a point light would come into play. If I was doing, say, a chandelier right, that had lots of little bulbs in it, those would be point lights because they're going in all directions. Okay, so you want to think about what looks the most like the type of light that I'm trying to create. There is one other type of light that's called a rectangular light. I'm not going to talk about a rectangular light today. We will get to what a rectangular light is. The reason that I shy away from it in the beginning uh, is because that the settings are completely different uh, than the point light and the spotlight, the things that we're, we're working with today. Okay? So stick with just a point light and a spotlight for today, and we'll get to some of the other ty light types a little bit later on. OK? 
Okay? So I'm asking you as part of 222 to make two, maybe four light fixtures, right? A lot of people start with the can light just as a kind of a learning experience. Obviously, can light's pretty generic. It's not that big of a deal to create. End up with something a little bit more fun, um, but enjoy this, right? Lighting is really fun. Designing a light fixture is fun. When you try to include too much glass as part of your light fixture, you can run into trouble, and it can be difficult to, to actually uh, get it to render correctly. Sometimes you have to increase the intensity of the lights a fair amount to compensate, especially if it's enclosed. The point light is enclosed inside glass. That can be very challenging because you need the, the, um, the power to go up. So I would encourage you, instead of using glass, like if you wanted to say a frosted piece of glass, use something with kind of a light gray transparency like the window shade that I did, but that's not actual glass in its material, okay? because glass tends to be more. If you want something with glass in it, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Just recognize the settings are going to be slightly different. Okay? So the best thing to do is to practice, to try stuff out, see what it looks like, see how it turns out, and to learn from your kind of experimentation. Okay? Any questions?